I'm Jake Thomas, a.k.a. Matt McGuire. And I'm Davida Williams, a.k.a. Claire Miller. And this is episode three of the Living Lizzie podcast, uh, a very McGuire podcast. Hey, what's up, Davida? Hey, nothing. How are you? All right, just just chilling out uh, in our... our I, I, I've done the best I could with, with decking out this space to make it more... Lizzie it's feeling a really nice. Is this this is a kids' choice award? Okay, I have to talk about this this award over here. If if you're just listening to the podcast right now, you're missing out on a ton of stuff on the YouTube version. So you might want to check that out as well. But yeah, this right here is um, a kids' choice award. Now, tell me when when you think of the phrase kids' choice award, what do you think of slime? The Nickelodeon, yeah. right? Oh, the, Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nickelodeon yeah. too. Kids' yeah. Choice Awards, but in the UK, they have the Kids' Choice Awards UK, and that is owned by Disney. Oh. So okay. Oh, that's why it says Disney Channel. Kids yeah. Channel. That's okay. Best Disney Channel program, two thousand three. And and you you can tell it's from the UK because of the way they spell program. Program. Programmy. Yeah. <laughs> Programmy. Um. This, uh, okay, so this was like 2000, yeah, it was actually 2003, I remembered it correctly. Uh, this was 2003, uh, Disney flew me out to London. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they fl flew me and my parents out business class on um, uh, uh, Virgin Atlantic. Oh, that is fancy. It was like, that was like, I think the first time I had been on like an international first class anything. Yeah. Or like probably first class in general, it was the first time I'd been on something like that. And um, uh, flew us out there and uh, put us up, and we went to this massive award show at uh, Royal Albert Hall in London, and uh, I accepted this this award for best children's program. Were you the only cast member there? I was. Wow. So I was there to accept it, and um, on behalf of the on behalf of. Oh. Well, I, I feel like it may have been. You know, their categories are a little skewed because yeah. <laughs> it was like literally all just. Disney programs. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, hey, the best new program? Hey, how about this program called Lizzie McGuire that just started? Uh I think it but just started still in, in cool. the UK. It's very cool. Yeah. It's very cool. Uh and I appreciate it. And I, I carried this, I remember, on the plane as my carry on. That is I, so funny. I, I could oh, see this? that. Oh, this? Oh, you wonder about this? <laughs> oh, this is my award, you know, no, no big deal. Oh. But yeah. Wait, I remember I remember this vividly we were sitting in school mm -hmm. on set yeah and you told me you were filming a movie and i remember being like whoa that is crazy it was i want to say Haley joel osmond movie yeah what was it ai robot it was ai yes. it was ai artificial intelligence i which, remember being like he's so little to be doing these which huge is movies. so weird <laughs> because like like i said in an earlier episode like i i actually this a Lizzie McGuire was my first like kid show. Like anything that I'd been in prior was all like heavy dramatic I mean, stuff. Yeah. I that robot movie was very It did it makes you cry. <laughs> yeah. So I, I had booked and it's really kind of weird how things worked out, but um I booked uh AI, which is this Steven Spielberg movie, uh, and I had booked Lizzie McGuire at the exact same time. And they told me, oh, you're going to have to choose between one of these. One of these. You can't do both of them. It's not going to work. Uh, and it's like, what? Yeah. Which I can't imagine what my parents were thinking at that time because they were like, uh, how do we choose between like, a series regular or a Steven Spielberg movie? Yeah, like you don't want to – maybe you get older and you're like, Mom, why would you do this to me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> somehow they managed to make it work out to work. where like, I would do – one week with Lizzie, another week with uh, Steven Spielberg, and wild because the Steven Spielberg thing was like a three or four month production. Like yeah. it was, a, it's a huge, huge movie. And what was it like working for Steven Spielberg? See, here's the thing too. Uh, at I you know, like, when like you're that little, it's old. not. There's no pressure. There's no pressure. I would be peeing my pants the, these days, but then back then. It was just like, hmm. there's no fear. <laughs> yeah. There's no fear. I'm yeah. like, oh, because I, I knew at the time, like, oh, yeah, he did like Jurassic Park and like E.T. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. OK, those whatever. are fun. <laughs> yeah. It's like I have no concept yeah. of like the gravity of all this. Yeah. Now I do. 
Right. Now I look back and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Why was I playing with those toys instead of like giving him my full attention? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that was, that was a weird, weird time. I'm glad it both worked out. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Lizzie, Lizzie was, um, Lizzie was a good choice to it make sure a, yeah. that I was, I was able to do that one. Yeah. Glad that, glad that worked that out. That it worked out. Um, have, have you had circumstances where you've had to choose between one role or the other? Yeah, I have. Did, were you happy about it? Did I was. You, okay. I was happy right. with my decision. It definitely okay. wasn't like Steven Spielberg, but, <laughs> but, but still, I no, mean, but it's, still it, it's frustrating because also there's a lot of laps in yeah. work for yeah. actors and yeah. then suddenly it's always like all or nothing when it rains it yeah. pours it's That's always it all always or nothing goes. so you're always like where were you six months ago yeah exactly. but yeah you know it's how it always goes yeah uh yeah i i would say i'm about the same i feel like uh i feel like i didn't miss out on too much of the things that i turned yeah. down. i i was going to be in a michael bay film <gasps> Um, uh, Pearl Harbor. Oh, I booked Pearl Harbor. That's a good one. That's a good one. But it was only to pay, play like Matt Damon as a kid in like the oh, beginning wow. of the film. Uh, I forgot what else I was doing, but um, eh, didn't, didn't work miss out. out that much. Yeah, you know, Matt Damon doesn't hang out with me anymore. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the way it goes. Um, it's such a weird life, acting. It is. It's 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 so much of just being available at the right time yeah at the right place and having the right look yeah it is that's that is essentially what it is it's sad yeah <laughs> okay episode three when moms attack this is a cute episode it's cute it's you cute. know they, okay so the 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 gist of it is that lizzie and her friends have a class field trip that they have to go on into the woods uh and um the last minute chaperone is lizzie's mom which that's like every teenage girl's it's the last worst nightmare, last right? person you ever want on your field trip. Oh, oh, yeah. But Me? my my mom was one of those. Oh, really? She would sign up for things, and she I think was mine's the same. Yeah, she was around, and yeah. I'd always be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> please. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but I, I mean that that's a, a good parent. You know what yeah, I mean? I exactly. can't knock her for that now, right, looking back, right. but. It was uh, when but I was then, at the age. I ugh. was like, I don't need you here. <laughs> um, and then on the flip side, Matt and Sam uh, are, are left at home yes. alone. And they have to fend for themselves, uh, which means that they have to uh, try to try to eat dinner. Basically, that's like you that's can't. their hardest. That's their objective. Looking back on it, like, come on, really? We can't cook. It's like very much a joke about how men are just helpless without women. Come on. Uh, <laughs> do you do you cook? I love cooking. Oh, okay, cool. I, I so remodeled you... my entire kitchen That's with my true. own bare hands. That is true. So that I had a better experience okay. at the place that I cook. That's that's great. That's yeah, that's great. I love cooking as well, but that's so funny that you just kept yelling. What what did you keep saying? I'm, we're gonna starve. Yeah, we're gonna starve. <laughs> we're gonna die. Uh, because yeah, mom leaves them a three week old tuna casserole. Yeah. Ugh. Look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you've got tuna in the you fridge can't keep for three tuna weeks for that three long. week old tuna, you can't do that. No, you can't eat old fish. She's she's trying to kill them. You could get really sick. Actually. I, I, so I, I have a, I have a thing actually at at, at my house where um. Uh, T Max, I don't know where he is now. He he'll he'll wander He's in somewhere. here at some point. T Max is the uh, basically the food tester in the home. So um, if there is a piece of fish that uh, was left in the refrigerator and it's questionable, like like mm, I've opened this up, it should be fresh, it should be safe to cook, but <sighs> is it? <laughs> and so what what I'll do, I I let him sniff it. And he'll it's, tell you? Here's the thing. T-Max is insane about fish. He will, like, if, if I'm opening up a can of tuna or something, it doesn't matter where he is at, in the house. He will find you. He will start complaining so loudly. So and, <laughs> and he knows when I'm cooking yeah. fish. So, um, so for him, if I'm getting fish out and I present it to him and he turns his nose up at it, I'm like, I'm not eating that. That is crazy. And I've, it's works. It works 100%. So I, he, he's the one that tests things for me. And I need a cat. 
Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> my dogs this is what you will need. eat junk off the ground. <laughs> yeah. were, sometimes I'm like, where did you get that trash in Ugh. your mouth? <laughs> like, I can't. Oh my God. But yeah, I would not eat three week old tuna casserole. That's just no, mean. No, that was mean. That was, she could have. She could have done something better. So I guess but, it was before Postmates. Sure, it was before Uber Postmates. Eats and yes. So you. They, it was it was hard times. Yeah. Very hard <laughs> times. If you hard. didn't have a phone book or a car, you're gonna starve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're basically gonna starve. Uh, so they decide that they're gonna make uh, duck l'orange, which is um, a orange duck dish, but they don't have duck. They just have hamburger meat. Oh, yeah. So it's hamburger <laughs> yeah. l'orange. That, that sounds disgusting. And they, disgusting. they, they didn't cook it in the oven. Either. They used a microwave. So um, clearly they they have something wrong with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do need supervision. <laughs> um, the mom needs to maybe let go a little bit and let them learn. Let them some... learn a little bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but with supervision. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, yeah. they, they, they look like they almost burned the whole place down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I I personally enjoy cooking. I um, do you, what? Do you have a favorite dish that you like to cook? I don't know. I like to cook a lot of different things, but I you know what I love, and it's because my grandma used to make it all the time when I was little is eggplant parmesan. Eggplant parmesan. It's okay. really good, and it's not like very difficult to yeah, make. You yeah, need yeah. cheese you and put it in eggplant. The oven and, yeah, that's yeah, bake it. That's good it. To go. Um, but yeah, that's I like to I like to make that a lot. Okay. Um. What kind of things do you make? All right, I think my favorite dish to make, and this is fish, it's relating to T Max, um, but I, I've gotten very good at making a seared ahi, a, a pepper crusted <gasps> seared ahi tuna. Oh wow! So like, if you ever go to like Lemonade, yeah, they have this exact same thing. It's like strips of seared yeah. ahi tuna. It's like very lightly seared. I basically had that one day and was like. I'm going to make that. You're going to make that. And That's now so I've got, funny. I did it from Trader Joe's, just the tuna steaks, the frozen ones. Yeah. And then I thaw it and like, I slice it real thin, pepper crusted. It's so good. I don't even eat fish and that sounds really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds delicious. <laughs> uh, that, that's a good go-to. And then, otherwise I feel like, I feel like nowadays, just 90% of my meals are, uh, can I make this a shake? That's right, so cool. funny. Yeah. That's great. so funny. My boyfriend every day is, he's like a huge shake person. He'll yeah. walk to get shakes. He makes shakes. When we, we moved this week and he, he was opening up like every single box. And I was yeah. like, what are you doing? And he's like, I can't find the blender. I was like, he's like, how am I going to make my shakes? So yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. That's a, it's, it's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> I, saw the, I saw something on TikTok today, which your boyfriend might like. That's so funny. It was a bottle that had in the base of it a blender built into it oh wow that's nice and it's just you just and you, you just put twist the fruit in there it. you twist it and then you just drink it oh amazing that's pretty good yeah, that is. yeah. the algorithm just hasn't hasn't found it hasn't, yet. yeah it hasn't yeah. hit us yet yeah you'll get there um one thing about this episode that i loved was the, yeah. the three-way landline call yes. <laughs> because i used to do that all the time it's such a hallmark too of the show is like these three-way calls between yeah. uh uh, Lizzie, Gordo, and Miranda. It was such a, it's such a thing of the time because yeah. everyone was doing it. It was in, even after Lizzie McGuire, it was in like Mean Girls. All yeah. these, you know, you have your landline and your friends and your. Whereas now it's just like they'll just do text bubbles on screen. Yeah, yeah. That's like the equivalent of <laughs> yeah it of a group. Yeah, of a group chat. Uh, or they won't do split screens. I don't see any split they screens really at all do anymore. Split if they do, it's like it's like a gag. Yeah, like they're doing it like to try to be funny. It used to be funny, but I loved the split screen. I it, thought it was... Do you know how they filmed those? No, because it's actually really convoluted. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so the way they would do it is they would like usually start off with one person uh, on the cast that's that's uh, in the scene, and that person would be filming the like you know doing their dialogue at the phone and then the script supervisor would be reading off the other person's lines the other two people's lines yeah. um or sometimes other three people because they do like a four yeah, up sometimes yeah. um and then the, they would read off those lines and then after they're done with that they go to the next person they film that person and then that person would wear a little earpiece that has the playback from the first from person. the first person. Oh, you got to really keep up and yeah, know how long the beats and are. And then it keeps going until I'm like, sometimes it would be 
three different recordings of dialogue in a little earpiece, and then you're saying your dialogue in there. So you have to be perfectly on time with your dialogue or the 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 sound guy is like basically pausing and playing and everything yeah. that's going into your ear. Oh, wow. It's really complicated. That I, is complicated, especially for kids. Yes. <laughs> but I, I guess they did that just because, well, they didn't have enough like cameras to yeah, film everybody yeah. at once or enough just crew and everything yeah. resources to like set up all these different things at the same time. It was a fairly small set. Although I do remember they did and they, they showed this in the uh, a blooper one time which they had three sets side by side of uh, Lizzie's room, Miranda's room, Gordo's room, and they're all on a phone call, but it was all in one shot. In what? Oh. They just put the lines, the lines that. were fake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was funny. I remember that, yeah. That's that. a way better way of doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they probably got really sick of doing it the old way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's way quicker. And landlines in general. I, the, the latest generation is missing out on a whole experience there of having a landline and then somebody picking up the phone when you're on a, fo- a conversation and be like, hey, hey, I'm, I'm talking on the phone. Get off. Get yeah. on the phone. I'm talking. I'm having a conversation. My mom would answer. I swear. I swear people would listen in on, on my phone I'm sure. Calls. I'm sure. I'm sure my parents did. Yeah. From downstairs, yeah. you just pick yeah. up and you're really quiet. Yeah. And yeah. Why not? Or, I probably would do that to my kids if I could. Yeah. <laughs> now or, kids have so much privacy. It's true. <laughs> or you pick up the phone and it's just, I'm on the internet. Yeah. Turn, hang up. Yeah. Get, kick me off AOL. Oh my God. I forgot about that. The yeah. dial up. Yeah. 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 It's so funny because sometimes when you fill out forms now yeah. and you have to put your phone number down, it'll be like, is this home or mobile and it's like is there a difference yeah, is there, yeah. who has like, well it's both phones. i'm have my i use it when i'm at home yeah <laughs> it's oh, well yeah it's very it's interesting i have a friend who has a landline still and he's my age and it's very strange oh my gosh he's actually younger does he have a big it's, i'm, I'm gonna call him out it's jason dolly J- hey J- <laughs> jason dolly why do you still have a landline a landline has is has he lived in the same house for a long time no Oh. He, I, I think, I think it was, <laughs> so I think it was one of those things where it's like a cable package and like with the they internet just bundled it in with the internet. So he's like, okay, and he's like, all right, it didn't cost him anything, but he gets calls on it. He gets calls oh on it. It was like, who is calling you on a landline? And, and like, like a voice, does he have like a voicemail? Setup? I think he does. Wow. Yeah, and I'm like, he's like, oh yeah, it's like probably just like telemarketer or something. It's like, why, why, why do you, you have even it? bother? Why do you bother? Just unplug it. That's There's no reason. so funny. There's no reason. But I do, the one thing I do miss the most about having a landline is the actual phones. Yeah. The actual phones were yeah. nice. You could have style to it. You could have a weird phone. Yeah, that's so true. Now we just have these glass that breaks easily. Everybody's got and... the same yeah. iPhone. You know, yeah. it all looks the same. I used to have like really fun landlines in my room. Yeah. Like, you know, like... A, I had a clear plastic, like red one, Oof. and like clear plat. That, that's just that's just like pinnacle. Of yeah, two thousand. <laughs> yeah. Just having a clear plastic. I had anything. really cool stuff, but yeah, now we just have all these black glass things that break. I used to have a, uh, and, and I think this was a promo thing that they like. I got was sent as like a a, a, a promo package something. But do you remember hip clips? Hit hit clips. No. So it was this like little music player that um, it would just like have a little cartridge yes. like that and it would just play a section of a song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had a hit clip phone. Whoa. And if you put someone on hold, it would play the music. That is so unnecessary. And it's totally awesome. un- I would, But I never, I never had an opportunity to actually put somebody put on hold. Put someone on hold. So I would you- just put them on hold anyway. And like, play a hey, song. hang on one second. It's probably like impressive to like a girl at school. Like, just here's my little. No, let me put you on two. Yeah. <laughs> um, we we had some really great adult cast on the show. The teachers, yeah, the parents, everybody was really talented. And uh, like as we talked about before, great job. Great job. When Short everyone... days. Yeah. <laughs> great job. Yeah. Um. Uh. We we talked about the parents a little bit. I mean, like Bobby Carradine. Who is Revenge of the Nerds? Amazing, amazing. And then you've got um, um, Hallie Todd, who I only later in life, uh, when I started watching and getting very obsessed with Star Trek: The New Generation, The Next Generation, TNG, 
I don't She's, know. So, uh, are you familiar with TNG? No. Okay, that was the one with, um, you know, Captain Picard. So, like, yeah. Patrick Stewart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, there's Data. Data is, like, the cyborg that is a crew member. Hallie Todd played Data's daughter. Oh, my gosh. Uh, she was a recurring character. And, like, I remember watching uh, TNG for the first time through, just watching every single episode. I, I don't recommend. I mean, it's great. It's a great show, but it's like hundreds upon hundreds of episodes. Of episodes. And I, they're all like 45 minutes long. I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a super like outer space person. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I did do an episode though of Deep Space Nine. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. I, I had like spots down my face. Wow. I don't know what it was called. It was some kind of something. Okay. I but, never watched these Space. Yeah, right? but uh, yeah. Anyways, I had to TNGs get TNGs like, were, that was my thing. That, that was, was that was like the main one. That was, that the, was the most popular it one. It was, for sure. Um, is Hallie still acting? I I watched, so, I was rewatching the episodes and yeah. I was like, she's so good. She's really good. She Her timing is so good. Yeah. Um, they recently just um, did a movie. It was... Uh, her and her husband Glenn and uh, their daughter Ivy, they all wrote, produced, directed uh, a uh, an independent film. That's that awesome. uh, that just got released. I think I think it was released by Lionsgate. I oh, think? amazing! It's called The Last Champion. The Last Champion. Yeah, it's okay. a wrestling. Okay, um, cool. Uh, movie, but uh, it was great. I went and watched it at one of their screenings. Um, they're so cool. They live in um, Louisiana now, I believe. That's great. Um, but uh, yeah, they keep busy. She's so talented. She's so talented. Uh, and she still has those iconic glasses. Did she she's, really? She's held on to them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And then Bobby, actually speaking of glasses too, remember a few years back, he was like, hey, I've got the glasses from Revenge of the Nerds. You oh my wear them? God. I wear them. I was like, oh, this is so cool. Oh my gosh. Uh, but, does, does he still live in oh, far away? Um, No, he actually lives like right down the street. He's in Hollywood. Oh, he's okay. Like, he's like next to the Hollywood Bowl. Okay. And he just rides around on his motorcycle or in his, in his cop car. Was it him that was, we were doing the table read. He's like, I have someone coming to fix my cable. So who was it that was getting their cable fixed in the middle no of the table read? I have no idea. It was really funny. <laughs> I think it was though. him. And he was like, if I disappear, I'll come back. It's just my Makes cable sense. I can, I can see <laughs> I that. Like, okay. I can see that. I can totally see that. Um, uh, and then the rest of our like adult cast too, principal, uh, Phil Lewis. Yeah. Phil Lewis was our principal. Phil, you know, uh, of course went on to do sweet life with Zach and Cody. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then he and I had, did, we did another movie when I was like 15 or 16 called monster night. Um, but, uh, he, do you know what he's doing nowadays? What? He is like a majorly in demand director. So, wow. so on sweet life, I think it was like sweet life on deck or something. Yeah. He would, uh, direct a few episodes every once in a while. And that's how he kind of got started into like multi-cam tv wow. directing and then he had friends that were on mike and molly uh, yeah. the primetime uh sitcom and he got to direct on one of those and then it just became a thing where he was like oh yeah i i i'm now getting asked to be a, a director on this and now he is so high in demand That's as crazy. a multi-cam director that he doesn't he, like he doesn't act anymore. He's yeah, just like, this is my full-time job. I mean, multi-cam is so fun. It's very fun. And it, again, short hours. Short hours. <laughs> short, hours. short hours. That's what we're aiming for. Like <laughs> short actual working hours. Yeah, it's yeah. great. You, know you, got, you, you got the one day though. You got the one day the one where everything's got to go yeah, right. Yeah. With a live audience and everything, it's got to go right. Although I just learned like in the past few years that some shows, they don't even do a live audience. It's multicam. You think there's an audience. There is no audience. I, I did, um, I did a multicam during COVID. Yeah. And it was, I guess like laugh track cause or yeah. something, you yeah. know, because we, we were filming on a stage where there yeah. was potentially could have been an audience out there, but yeah. there was no audience. Yeah. I was very shocked. I was like, where's the it's, audience? It's They're like, we're not bringing people yeah. here. <laughs> um, I went uh, and shadowed on, for directing on an episode of Bizarre Vark. Oh, okay. With, uh, that, that was the one That's with, Nickelodeon, uh, right? No, that's that's Disney Channel. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's the one that had uh, Olivia Rodrigo. Oh. Uh, that was, I think, her first show with oh, Disney. Oh, okay. Um, and... Yeah, like there was no audience. Yeah. But they just filmed like I think three days out of the week they actually filmed. Something okay. like that. So it was a little bit different of a setup, but uh 
Yeah, that was super surprising. That was before COVID too. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, very strange. So interesting not to have not to have a live audience yeah. in a show that's basically live audience. It's yeah, you're like performing do, on. <laughs> do you do you enjoy doing multicam? I like it. Okay. I do like it a lot. Um, I just think it's fun and it's like light. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You you get into the hour long and it's like sometimes sixteen hour days and you're crying. Yeah. And, and not that I don't. I love to work yeah. and I love to do it all, but I yeah. do. Um, I enjoy comedy and I enjoy multicam. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you like doing stage performance, like plays and stuff like that? Theater. No. no. I, I think my anxiety is a little too high. <laughs> I would love to, but just the thought of it is like oh, going same. out there like once, sometimes twice a day. I guess maybe you just get in the rhythm of yeah, it, I but, guess so, but getting like, into that rhythm, I would, it would take a lot. See, that, that's why for me, multicam is like this it is in like between it is like a because theater because there's always because that's how Corey in the house was it was with a live audience and i can remember just always uh, it was friday nights that we do that um it was friday nights the first couple takes or something the nerves are really, really high, high with yeah. a live audience and then after that it's like okay we're good it comes out. but it's but it's like oh man my anxiety Here, yeah Whoa. but it, admittedly i mean we talked about it but admittedly like the past few multicams I've had have been no audience. So Great. it's just been Love like, that. yeah. Love that. You can, you can count me in for yeah. multicam again. I'm down for it. Now, if only we could do stage performances. Theater, yeah, the theater. With no Oof. actual theater. That'd be great. Yeah, the theaters. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about if that. If I can just have like just like one or two people at the show, that'd be great. There was this Broadway play. I don't know if it's still out, but it was with um, Jesse Williams. And I just remember hearing about it because um, pictures got leaked from mm. the play. And yeah. in the play, he has like a full frontal nude scene. Whoa. And like pictures, people were not supposed to take pictures and they did. And that's kind of sucks. But yeah. I remember thinking, never in my life would I be able to stand in butt a- naked in front of an entire audience of people and say lines and perform. Yeah, I would, nah. this just wouldn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to need a couple nightmares. more takes. <laughs> I'm going to need, uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to need like a closed set. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I was just, I remember thinking that and being like, no, he must have a lot of confidence and which is great, but yeah. I, you know, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I've recently discovered another, subgenre of acting that I absolutely love. Video game mocap. Oh my god. <laughs> Let is me that tell where you. is that where people are playing video games with the headset with a cam? No, 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 no. You're thinking of live streaming oh, like okay. on Twitch. Yeah, or like something? Twitch. No, no, yeah. no. I'm talking about like acting in the game. Being in the game. Oh, I've auditioned for one of those before. Yeah. Okay. So I've I've definitely auditioned for one of those before. Didn't book it. Okay. But but I've heard of but I've seen what they do to you and like I, it looks pretty crazy. I I I I've been doing my first I guess it's already done by now. Um uh I am starring in a video game that's coming out this year Whoa. that I've worked on for like 3 years and it's all performance capture. So it's like it's like the closest thing I can relate it to is it's like um how they filmed Avatar, Whoa. which is you're in a full suit that yeah. has a bunch of reference points, all the dots and everything. You have a helmet that has uh, an arm on it that has two cameras on the front of it that's watching your face and tracking your face movements. Whoa. It is insane. But you have this whole suit, right? You're, you're kind of, uh, it's, it's like pajamas. It's a little bit itchy, not a huge deal, but you're in these pajama things. The set, the soundstage is like a very tiny sized little soundstage. You've got these cameras all along like the top corners of the uh, the room that's like the cameras that are tracking you yeah. and your movements. Um, but otherwise, I mean, there's no real cameras. We've got like a couple cameras and operators, but like they're just like very small cameras yeah. and they're just like as like reference for what we're doing. The entire time it feels like we're just rehearsing a play and we're just playing pretend because we've got like stuff like, oh yeah, there's a car right there. You have to get into the car. It's like, almost we're like acting on an class. <laughs> it's like acting yeah. class. And the director, because like the director for all these cutscenes and stuff, uh, because he's not wearing a suit, he's not picked up by anything. So he just sits or stands right next to us. And he's like, all right, now look over there. And you're seeing that right there. And then, 
and then this is or like he's sitting and like just like watching us it feels that's so just like wild rehearsing yeah a play and it's just super super chill that sounds fun it's really fun yeah i want to do that and also it's 10 hour days wow yeah that's nice yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. Really nice. that nice. sounds like that sounds really fun it's very fun huh highly recommend okay <laughs> Did you ever go on any big school field trips? No, not really. Just because I wasn't, my school, I was so in and out of school a lot yeah. of the time. I'm trying to think of, I know growing up in LA, we'd go to like La Brea Tar Pits, places like that, yeah. but we never had a sleepover. Yeah. I did, I did go to sleepover camp in okay. Massachusetts. Okay. Um, so that would be like the closest thing where yeah. we stayed in a cabin and we did all those activities like archery and things yeah. like that. Um, so that would be the closest thing. They also like, I was saying to you, a girl who didn't like me gave me Oreos with toothpaste inside, like as a prank wow. <laughs> at camp. <laughs> that's actually, I mean, that's actually kind of impressive. So yeah. If you think about it, she, and she actually watched spent me, the time. And she watched me eat it and like smiled. And I was like, why are you smiling? And I was like, this tastes kind of strange. And then she's like, it's toothpaste. And I was like, oh. I mean, okay. All right. I'm brush my teeth now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, got me. <laughs> so I think that was like the well, closest. You still got the cookie part of it. Yeah, it was so fine. I was like, come on. It honestly... I remember being like, why is she smiling? Because yeah. I was like, nothing. It didn't, didn't taste that bad. I feel like they make that flavor now. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like a mint cookie. Yeah. Yeah. So All right. Like, okay. Um, well, but that who's was, laughing now? Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the closest experience I have to like that episode. Did okay. you do? I don't think I had. I, my parents were so protective of me. Yeah. I was not allowed to go anywhere. I, I didn't have the sleepaway camp was a big deal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't do I didn't do a whole lot growing up or like yeah. I didn't have a lot of sleepovers. Yeah. People would come to my house, but I wasn't going a lot of places. Same. I think same for me. Yeah. Except for let's see. I I would go to um my friend Sean's house uh for sleepovers and stuff. Until the one time that we went out to the movies and then um, and then like took the bus back and like stayed out too late, like walking back to his place. And then the police pulled us over for being out past curfew. <gasps> oh, what city was this in? Calabasas. I was going to say <laughs> Calabasas. Yeah. Because I went to high school in Calabasas yeah. and they had that 9, 10 p.m. curfew if yeah. you were under 18. Yep. They have, I, do they still have those rules? I don't know. I remember like COVID hit and they, they had those like, they gave us uh, whatever you call them. Um, Lockdown, whatever. What? They gave us curfews a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, don't go out past 10 or right, something right, like right. that. And everyone was so upset about it. But I was like, they do this in Calabasas. Yeah, really. <laughs> they, they do this at City Walk. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever hang out at City Walk when yeah. you were a kid? Yeah. They would do the curfew patrol where yeah. like, they would walk through all these security guards looking for anybody underage. Underage. Yeah, yeah that's so crazy. I re Calabasas was very was super strict. Yeah. I don't yeah. think you can smoke in public there. They yeah. have a lot of... But yeah, the curfew is the funny. Yeah. Did you get, what do you get? Like a ticket or just no, a they didn't, slap? No, just nothing. Slap on yeah, the wrist. They called my mom. Yeah, which is bad enough. And then I was enough. not allowed to <laughs> stay over in yeah. Sean's anymore. Yeah, that's bad enough. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We've talked about a couple things that are the hallmarks of an episode of Lizzie McGuire, right? Montages has to be on the top of the list. I love the montages. I was actually thinking about the montage in the earlier episode where you faked being sick. Oh yeah. It was almost like an indie film the way they did it. All yeah. these like quick cuts to yeah. like things. It was pretty cool. It, it, it seems like that was kind of a, also another hallmark of it. it was all these quick cuts and yeah. then, like uh, cutaways. Um, it was very stylized. It was very stylized. I, I liked it. I, th I feel like even the, the, um, stills yeah like the pictures yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a cool idea too i think they called them, they called them like digital stills yes, or something something in the, in in the, the script. script yeah yeah the stills that was a really digital good digital stills yeah <laughs> digital oh. <laughs> that's uh, so crazy yeah there i think a lot of the camera work was pretty you know advanced it's really fun yeah um 
The montages, though, every single episode of Lizzie McGuire has a montage. It has a montage, in it. yeah. Except for the reboot. Oh, really? I literally, okay, we shot two episodes of the reboot in 2019. I, I think was the only one who was vocal about, I was like, why are, the there no, why are there no montages in this? Oh my God. Where's the montage? That is so funny. They had other things. Did they have the animate? Animation? They had animated. I don't know if anyone said that before, but they had animated, animated Lizzie. Animated Lizzie. They had animated Lizzie. She made a return. That was. I used to. You know, I loved when they'd add animated Lizzie into the um, bloopers. Oh yeah, that's they right. do. Like, Which, if you think about it, that probably cost them a decent amount of money. Yeah, to do a to like. Oh yeah, we're gonna add in an extra animated sequence like Lizzie, where she's sitting on the edge of something and then falls over. Yeah. And, that's when they fully committed to bloopers at yeah. that point where they were they were adding animated Lizzie into bloopers. Into the bloopers. I loved that idea. Yeah. That's why the that's why the reboot didn't happen. Didn't happen. It's because there was no montages. Yeah, no montages. That'll do it. <laughs> That'll do it. Until they add montages, the reboot's not coming back. <laughs> Talking about the food and everything that is made, uh, these wacky kind of creations for food on set. Um for the food that we actually do have to eat, did you did you ever have to eat any of the food on set? Like the like the, the set food, In like the, the prop food? Yeah. I don't remember. Okay. I, did you what do you remember? Tons. I have to eat, I have to eat tons That's of stuff. So funny. But the thing is, um, I'm sure you've you've eaten food on other projects. Yeah, though. yeah. That's why I was, and, I was... And, and prop food is is just a very special. It's gross. It's it's gross. And it's they been give around you all day. They do. They give you like these buckets to like spit, spit buckets. Spit your food out into. Yeah, it's a really yeah. disgusting process. It but is. you know what? I it's so funny. I learned as I got older. If there's food in front of you in a scene, do not eat. Just don't eat it because Otherwise, then you're stuck eating you're it stuck for the entire eating day. It the entire <laughs> day, the exact same way. So I just for don't. continuity because yeah. you have to, and you're you're gonna be there forever for hours just eating the same Ugh. burger over and over, Ugh. spitting it. So I just Ugh. now yeah, sip some water. I just kind of play with it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I did a uh, this movie in Texas uh, last year that uh, we had a literally one whole day that was just at a breakfast scene. It was like it was like eight pages for just just, just the scene. scene. Yeah, and and we're all eating and everything. I watched as at the beginning when we first started filming, everybody around me is like, I'm just watching their food choices. Uh, <laughs> oh, they've got like a, a Bloody Mary looking thing. They're taking a sip of that. I'm oh. like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, give me some hot water with lemon in a mug. In a mu oh, and that's I was smart. Like, this yeah. was the smartest choice. You're going to drink tomato juice all oh, day. God. Like, <laughs> oh. no. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah. yeah. You live and learn. Yeah, you learn. You live and you learn. learn these things. Uh, but the spit buckets are really important yeah. <laughs> Be because the thing is like, it doesn't sound that bad at first where it's like, Oh, I just got to take a bite of this like this, delicious yeah. thing. It's not a big deal. But like, if you're sitting there and doing like 20 yeah. something takes of this scene and you're eating a bite of that, by the end of this, you are going to be very full. No, very it's not going to be fun. I did a Twix commercial once yeah. and I was very young. So I was like, this is going to be so fun. I love Twix. And yeah. when I tell you, by the end of the day, I was yeah. going to throw up. I was like, yeah. this is awful. Yeah. I had like 300 Twix bars. Yeah. <laughs> like, I did a Taco Bell commercial. Oh, which was, I mean, that's good. Yeah, it's great. But it's great. But <laughs> it was uh, also what I thought was funny. It was, it was the, the spicy or no, it was the the crispy chicken sandwich taco. Oh, wow. That's um, Great. Yeah. <laughs> but too many of those. <laughs> and, and, and it was me and another guy. And uh, at the beginning of the day, the food stylist was like, all right, we've got two versions of this that we need to, to promote. Um, we've got the regular version and the spicy version with a jalapeno. Which one of you wants the, uh, the you know, which version? And the other guy's like, I'll take the normal one. <laughs> I'm like, Great. Oh, so awesome. <laughs> I counted 17 tacos oh that I bit, I'm biting into now, perfect looking jalapeno slices. Yeah. But jalapeno but slices, nonetheless, I'm biting into 17 times in one is, day. The thing that also was funny, both of us vegan. I was going to say, 
I feel like I took myself out yeah. of a lot of these situations by <laughs> saying like, I can't. Yeah. I'm not going to eat it. But they, they don't. They didn't, they didn't used to do that. They don't, yeah. But like now, they'll now be they like, ask do you, you have they food ask you. allergies? Do yeah, you, yeah, yeah. whatever. So now I'm just like, yeah, I don't eat meat. I, I just I just tell my commercial agents, yeah, it's whatever. Just whatever, yeah. yeah. just whatever. Because <laughs> cause the thing is, literally after every single take, we'd bite into it. And it's not like they have to watch you like swallow yeah, it. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're chewing it. And then cut. Spit. And then they bring out the bucket and we spit into oh. it. Which is gross. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, after, I think though, after the end of that day, 17. my tongue was just shot from all the sodium. Oh my God. Oh. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. But yeah. the spice, spice and sodium. Yeah. I uh, One thing I remember eating the most on set, or, or just a, a moment that I remember the most, is um, it, it was the episode where Matt stays up all night. He doesn't have a bedtime. And so he's like just running around the house at midnight and he goes into the fridge and he gets just chocolate syrup. Oh my God. And just downs it. Ew. Good times. <laughs> yeah. Good. I enjoyed that one. I'm that sure. Was great. I'm sure. That was great. As an 11 year old. Yeah, that mm, was probably so That fun. was a win. That was a win. <laughs> one of the uh, kind of pop culture references in this episode is the names of the two teams, like the boys and the girls. They were doing it like Survivor, <laughs> which at the time of this show, Survivor was like hot and fresh. I mean, like that it's, was it's, yeah, it's just not fresh, popular. but it's yeah. Uh, Survivor's still going on. Yeah, it's still going, but it's not nowhere near the it craze that crazy, it was back then. Crazy. I remember us like putting the the VHS tape and timing it out to watch Survivor. To watch Survivor. And uh, what were the names again? They were very confused. I remember being like, "This isn't even." This I, is not I English. Like, I feel like one of them was Takis. Yes. <laughs> like that. I think, I think that's so, where they got the name for Takis. Is, that's so is funny. This episode of Liz McGuire. Um, and then like Pachanga Casino Resort, yeah. I think was the other <laughs> one. It was Takis and Pachanga <laughs> Casino Resort. Um, but uh, I, there's, there's a lot of these references that it's like Gen Z that's just now finding the show. Are, are they getting those? They're not getting those jokes. Yeah, probably not. No, I probably don't think not. Gen Z watches Survivor. No, those the not. Survivor audience has probably grown with it. Survivor audience, they're they're in retirement homes. Yes, now, <laughs> I feel like I actually just worked with a guy who was like thirty and the biggest Survivor fan, and I remember really? being like, huh, "Huh, so interesting." Hmm. No, I don't. I don't watch that show. But <laughs> it's a red flag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, some of some of the times when we were filming, we actually were on location. It wasn't often. They would try to do a lot on stage. But but sometimes we'd be outdoors on location yeah. somewhere. And it's a very rare occurrence. It happens. But they would fake a ton of outdoor stuff on the stage. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just, it is what it is. It's like being outdoors, you don't have any control over the environment. Yeah. Or the sun. <laughs> Whereas we could just be in a sunny day all day long uh, on stage, and especially like our, the backyard of the, the McGuire house, it's on a stage. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not real, but like they're lighting it, and we've got these hand painted backdrops and everything to make it look like it's a neighborhood in the background. But um, I, don't, I don't think they were fooling anyone, really. No, I don't think so. But it, I watched. I was watching the show, and I was like, huh. Like, there's a couple things that I was like. No, they weren't fooling anyone, but it was fine. Yeah. Nobody cared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you remember the high school that they would do exteriors at? Wasn't that what was? What's the name of that high school? Because they film everything at that high school. Which I one is it? Don't. It's in like the West Side, isn't it? There's a a college that I went to for like two seconds called mm -hmm. Mount St. Mary's in yeah. Brentwood, and it's really pretty. And that's where they filmed the OC school. Oh. So I wonder, but it's like very fancy that. Did you know that for college, I went to Starfleet University? What is that? Is that a Star Wars reference? <laughs> We're getting real close to not being friends anymore. I'm sorry. I don't no, want um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the exterior of Cal State Northridge uh, was used in the Star the newer Star Trek movies oh, as Starfleet Academy. Star okay, cool. Yeah. It was also I think the high school in uh 
what was the superhero kid movie sky high yeah oh, it was sky it was, high. it was that okay, one cool. too the exteriors oh wow yeah interesting yeah. <laughs> so i'm either from starfleet academy or i'm a superhero but, yeah you know, yeah <laughs> But for our actual soundstage, let's talk about like the layout of how everything was. Because it wasn't really a huge soundstage. No, it wasn't. Means. I've been on much larger sound stages, and they, they squeezed a ton of stuff into the stage. But okay, so we had the school set was on the far side. I was going to say that the hallways and the classrooms. Super long hallway, and then the cafeteria. Yeah. Um, and then the end of those hallways just didn't go anywhere End, ended yeah, yeah just, that's it <laughs> yeah um but they they utilized a whole lot of that and those the stairs oh the stairs yeah. they don't go anywhere yeah the stairs they just in <laughs> and then they had they did the outdoor yeah the outdoor area of the school was was right there outside yeah. on the lawn there yeah. but then they had the whole house inside they had, they the had house. a lot the house was was pretty substantial so yeah. we had the front door we had the kitchen, the living room, all that that you see there was was great. But as soon as you enter the front door, if you look to the left, nothing was there. Yeah. <laughs> nothing was there. There's like a little door or something there. Nothing was there. And then you go up the stairs, there's a little hallway along the banister up there, but those doors up there, they don't go anywhere. They don't go anywhere, they yeah. Anywhere. And then you get the backyard and the living room. And then around the corner on, on the other side, that's where Lizzie's room would be. And then it would kind of, they'd have a couple other rooms there that would just kind of like swing kind of areas they would swap in whatever they needed for the day but like lizzie's room always existed. was always the same yeah, yeah. yeah um did you have a room you had a room i had a room yeah. but it wasn't permanent okay so it would be one of the it swap would, yeah rooms. It, would, it would it would be one of the swap rooms um yeah my room was supposed to be in the middle lizzie's room was on the far right and then the parents room was on the far left yeah nice nice house it was a very nice house Wait, it, no one i don't think they ever established where i was gonna lived? ask if you knew where so okay all right so they say california ish but i also heard it could be texas um but in the reboot they actually did put a an actual where was it pasadena <gasps> that house pasadena, looks california. like a pasadena house it looks like a, which do you know where the actually the house is the real house where the real house is in um, Brentwood. Oh, Brentwood. It's in okay. Brentwood. It's right off the 405. Because I live near Pasadena. It's so pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. And it cut, like that Lizzie house is it's nice. Like yeah. the backyard is nice. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what like. Her parents like, did? Yeah. Her parents, <laughs> I mean, mom doesn't work. Mom's yeah. home all the time. What does dad do? And he was like, his character was didn't give me millionaire businessman. No, man. it didn't seem like he's like, you know, yeah, like yeah. a, like a ruthless like kind of always guy. busy kind of thing. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, yeah, it's my job. It pays super well though. Yeah. <laughs> I got a huge house in Pasadena. I wonder what he would. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they did, they did allude to a couple of his jobs in the past as jokes before. Oh really? Yeah. Um, that he was like maybe on like the he was the Secret Service or something. Oh my like god, that's good. Uh, yeah. CIA. He, he, had, he had a couple jobs before. That's so funny. So um, in this episode, Lizzie has a stuffed animal pig, a plush pig that Kate makes fun of her for. What name? Mister Snuggles, I think. Something like Mr. that. Mister Snuffles. Did you ever have a a plush pet that had a name? No, I. Well, I wasn't really into stuffed animals really okay yeah i'm trying to i think that was more like my sister's thing uh, i had a little right. sister yeah. i was the big sister yeah so you gotta be more yeah did you aloof about it yeah <laughs> uh i did i had a ton um growing up uh i i wasn't i wasn't very inventive with a lot of the names i had a lion his name was liony um that's so funny i uh there was a uh I think there was a monkey named Monkey. Oh my god! Um, except for one, I had a, a bear that I had ever since I was like a baby. Uh, his name was Jimmy. Jimmy. I don't know why. That's a good name. His name's Jim. That's so I, funny. I, I have no idea why why his name was Jimmy, but yeah, yeah, I, I had Jimmy. That's a, my sister had like all the Beanie Babies. Same. Oh had my all, god! Had them all. Had I them think. All. Well, actually, I think you're my little sister's age. Oh, okay. And so I think yeah, you guys would it have lines up. Yeah. a lot in common. Yeah. Um, but we did have a lot of like pets. We had, my sister and I got, um, lovebirds and they're like little birds mm -hmm. and they're 
p- really pretty colors, and we named them Sweetie and Cutie. <laughs> um, so yeah, we had a lot of little like real pets. Real I guess. Yeah, <laughs> and we had a hamster. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Close to a stuffed. But animal. you wouldn't bring <laughs> any of them on a field trip. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't think I brought Jimmy on a field trip before. <laughs> so the episode ends with um, obviously. Lizzie's mom doing something that's like she's going out on a limb. She's uh, actually ends up being a pretty cool mom. And Lizzie realizes that, uh, oh, I, I'm, I'm taking her for granted. You know, I'm like, uh, and it's a great lesson. It's a really great lesson. I feel like that's how a lot of the episodes of Lizzie ended was just like, all right, Lizzie's learning something important about yeah. this. And that, uh, uh, it, it's usually something about friendship or family that, that at the end of the day is the most important thing and we're like doing the right thing is yeah. the most important thing. Um, whereas most, if not all of my storylines ended with, Oh, well, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> oops. oops. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. Yeah. yeah I kind of missed the, um, the the lessons at the end of shows that was yeah. such a big thing at that time especially in comedy at the end of the episode it was like oh you learned something about family yeah about... yeah it was sweet <laughs> doesn't exist anymore doesn't at all <laughs> we don't have the attention span for that now. yeah it's true. let's be fair <laughs> uh all right so now we're gonna go to questions from the audience okay so um a creature creature, creature. asks uh, how do they make your hair defy gravity like that? Um, the hair, the hair thing uh, on the show, it was, I had very spiky hair. Yeah. It, it yeah. became a thing. It was a massive amount of hair gel. Was it really? That's it so funny. It was so much hair gel that they eventually just had to start buying like a tub that was like this big. Like Costco size. Just for me. <laughs> That's so it was that funny. and then a hair dryer. It was just that and hair dryer the entire time. I guess I was just not paying attention to how they did your hair i just would like see you like it was impressive yeah later like in the second season like it was extreme yeah Uh, i mean it got really 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 crazy yeah it did but i loved that that was a great character choice the thing the thing thing is i on the very first pilot episode i remember going up to the um the the hairdresser and they're like oh so what, what are we doing with the hair this was me just completely out of the blue. I was like, I want to do spiky hair. Oh my God. And but the that, rest was history. That age though, that was a yeah. big like It was a cool style. Look because was a I, big I was style. never able to do that look because I don't think my parents yeah, ever parents like probably... gave me enough hair product no. to like facilitate <laughs> that. Yeah. So like I saw an opportunity and I took yeah. it. And plus, where they were like, whatever hairstyle you want. They're not taking you to auditions with spikes. No, so not, you no. yeah. <laughs> this was your no, this was this your was opportunity. My chance. Yeah. This was my chance. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that, that was, that was on a whim yeah. and it became a thing. Uh, okay. Sylvia Huey 92 asks how similar or different were you at the time? And currently are you to your character? So how, how do you feel? Oh my God. Do you I, feel like a really like mean person I, on a regular I just, basis? I'm usually awful. <laughs> I really connect with her yeah. in that way. Yeah. No, I actually, it was kind of weird for me to play that role because i was never popular in school yeah yeah. the artsy kids never are they're you know um and so i was like bullied a little bit and i so to be and there i remember i remember these girls names and i'm not going to call them out but like in my high school these like three blonde girls it was sarah it was the it was the total like stereotypical like three kates oh yeah you know um no, one was Deanna. <laughs> Deanna. But I, so I just remember like being like, oh, I'm like kind of playing like Deanna and like her friends. But yeah. I'm, I didn't relate to that at all. And like how she sets people up yeah. and very mean. I try not to be like. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, she, she did you a favor. Yeah. yeah. In the long run. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, about you uh i i basically feel like i was just me i as I, a kid I, yeah like that was just that was just me you can almost see it on your face like you kind of yeah. like you look like you're 
up to no good. You always have like this smirk yeah. Yeah. where you're like. I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't like constantly trying to like prank people. No, I no. I was not about that. But, but in the scene, you're just. It's just like yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was. I was just. I was just like a funny, like you know, one to to joke around kind of kid. So I fully was like that was. It was just me. Yeah. It was just me. Yeah. And I feel like also I kind of grew up into a version of just like that was already me to begin with. So it's kind of still me. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's, I don't know if that's an answer to the question, but that's as close as I'm going to get. The closest you, I'll say one more thing. Um, she did run for class president and yeah. she, so I feel like there was room for her to grow. So maybe she, she did have some, I do, you know, care about, politics and things like that yeah, so that yeah. is one area that we had in common okay i'm really grasping here okay. trying, to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get another dimension out of her yes. somehow. somehow somehow um but yeah so that's it <laughs> <laughs> all right well on that we're going to end episode three Yay. of living lizzie podcast uh if you all are not subscribed already please subscribe if you want to see more of the stuff, please message out to us. Leave us comments. Um, uh, let us know what you want us to talk about. Um, thank you so yeah. much thank for tuning in. Thank you, guys. In. All right. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.